Namaste, beloved. How are you? My name is Saima, and I'm a spiritual healer, sacred feminine coach, author, and yoga teacher. And I have the blessing of supporting wonderful clients all over the world and healing and transforming their blocks and co creating the lives of their dreams. Um, you can find me on flourishinggoddess.com. Today, what I would love to talk to you about is how we can heal our sexuality from a sacred feminine and spiritual and goddess perspective and approach. Um, this topic is very near and dear to my heart. If you know about my journey, if you you know, know about my work, I very openly share that I had a lot of sexual abuse in my childhood um, when uh, my parents took my sisters and I from Canada, which is my, my birthplace, my home country, to my parents' home country, which is Pakistan. And over there from the age of 7 to 11, I was sexually molested and assaulted by several men. Um, I can remember clearly 11 different men who abused me and um, there was so much else that also happened. I was physically abused by my parents and there was so much moving around. So a lot of things happened, but uh, particularly with sexuality, uh, also I was raised in that Pakistani Muslim environment. So a lot of uh, religious, you know, upbringing around shame and guilt and sex being something sinful unless it's in the context of marriage. And with the abuse that I experienced, my very first experience of it was when I was seven years old. And when my father found out about it, he locked me in a room and beat me with a huge wooden log, which was used to um, wash clothes by hand in Pakistan. So he hit me with that when he found out I was being molested by a next door neighbor's um, guard. <laughs> And my mom and sisters, uh, older sister and a housemaid were, you know, banging on the door, screaming and asking him to stop. And so that's one of my memories, when my first experiences of what sex means and what sexuality is. And it was very traumatic, of course. And, um, you know, all the way up to grade, uh, sorry, the age of 11, the last experience of sexual assault was with someone who I considered to be an older brother. I called him an older brother, so um, that was very emotionally uh, traumatizing for me, that sense of complete betrayal, because he was someone I really looked up to and trusted, and trust is a very vulnerable thing when you're going through that kind of childhood. So I just share this with you to help you to know that I really, really know what it's like to have uh, trauma around sexuality, and I pray that that has not been your case, but I want you to know that I know the pain that can be involved in healing our sexuality. So for me, when we thank God came back to Canada, um, I was acting out and, and it manifested in post-traumatic stress disorder, but I did have a lot of help in psychotherapy in my high school. Um, but later on, it, I still had a second bout of depression in my mid-20s, which is where I needed to do all the spiritual healing. And also some things it created was a lot of shame guilt, uh, the sense that I was tainted and bad and bound to go to hell, fear of intimacy to the point where if I thought a boy was cute, I would just want like um, a black hole to appear into me and disappear because I couldn't stand any kind of attraction, you know, to or from someone. And it was just really difficult for me to be in that energy. Um, and, you know, because of religious and cultural uh, restrictions, I wasn't allowed to date. So just everything was very forbidden and um, something to be afraid of. And I want you to know that your journey does not have to be as long and as painful as mine was. And I really pray that you haven't been through something traumatic the way that I was. Um, but I just want you to know that there's always hope because here I am before you very, very happily married to an amazing husband who makes me feel like a goddess every day. And that includes with my sexuality. So I really hope that you know that, you know, this journey will bring you so much strength and power if you really step up. And if hopefully you haven't gone through something that traumatic, but you are just in a place where you want to embrace your sexuality and celebrate it, that's what we're going to talk about. So I hope you're ready. Um, and one of the first things I want you to know is that from the goddess perspective, sexuality is sacred. And unfortunately, you know, when patriarchal religions came, they took away that aspect of what's sacred, you know, and they turned sexuality into something that is to be um, shamed and, you know, just punished even. And the goddesses knew, the goddess traditions knew that this is so sacred that in goddess uh, spirituality, there's no separation between 
a woman's sexuality or our sexuality as human beings and our sacredness and our spirituality. And in fact, sexual energy is, you know, the primal life force energy is the Kundalini energy. And it is the life force, the energy that creates life because in truth, that is how we procreate right through our sexual organs and sexual energy and sexual fluids. So this is something that is celebrated and seen as extremely powerful because that is what sexual energy and our sexuality is. So it's a much more empowering path of healing as well as being. And that's what I want to share with you today so that you can really reclaim your sexuality, integrate it with your spirituality, and just know that it is part of your power and your holiness as a human being and as a beloved child of God, goddess, and as a uh, you know living embodiment of the divine yourself. So how I will be sharing the journey with you in terms of my approach to helping you heal your sexuality is the exact same way that I help my clients. And this is through a coaching and healing program I have called Clear, Heal, and Transform Your Blocks. You can find that on my website if you want. That's a um, general healing program and it's basically customized to each client and I want to share with you the goddesses that I take my clients through when we are working on healing their sexuality and it's in a very progressive way so I really hope that you get a lot out of this and that you can really find ways to apply this to your own healing journey okay my love so the first goddess that we work with is the goddess Persephone and Persephone is the maiden goddess. She was the daughter of Demeter, a Greek goddess, and she was as a maiden, as this beautiful, feminine, uh, virgin goddess in her innocence and sweetness, abducted and uh, by the god Hades, the god of the underworld, and taken into the underworld where she was raped and basically forced into marriage. And, you know, this was very traumatic for her, of course, because she went from being this innocent maiden to being in the depths of the underworld with the king of the underworld. And yet she ended up transcending her experience and becoming the queen of the underworld, ruling the underworld and becoming that partner and equal wife to Hades and really owning her role. And then through a lot of other, you know, mythological uh, drama, she ends up where she can spend half the year with her mother Demeter. And that's when we have spring and summer. And then she descends into the underworld of darkness through fall and winter. And what she represents is the feminine, the dark feminine, which means that, and this is true for all healing work, is that in order to heal something, we need to reveal it to ourselves first. This is a process of delving into the unconscious and seeing what were your wounds around sexuality, for instance, in this case. What were some of your earlier experiences? What were the messages, the teachings, and the values that you inherited or you experienced around sexuality? And what were the wounds that you had around this? And it takes a lot of courage to, you know, partner with Persephone, which basically is about getting into the unconscious and digging through and letting those wounds come to light, shedding light on them. But yet this is so essential. The goddess, the sacred feminine, is not afraid of the dark because it knows when you shine light on the darkness, that is how we illuminate and we free ourselves. So, and when we're not aware of something, what happens is we are unconsciously playing out these patterns that sabotage our happiness and put us in situations where we are in relationships, where we are not manifesting partners who respect and honor us. We may not be honoring our body. We may not be getting the pleasure uh, that we deserve. We may have a lot of uh, issues and struggles around our sexuality and even love relationships and romantic relationships because it's all connected. So Persephone helps us to see, okay, what is my story? What are my wounds? What are my issues? What are my traumas? around my sexuality and everything else. So the first step is to be willing to delve deep, go into the depths of your darkness. And of course, it's very helpful to have a guide, or a therapist, or someone to support you. As I said, I had someone in high school, a psychologist support me in high school, um, and that was extremely helpful. And yet again, in my mid-20s, I needed spiritual support. So I was I sought spiritual support to help myself with that. And I really invite you to consider getting support around that because it will be so invaluable to you, my love. Um, but if that's not feasible for you, a free and powerful way to do that, and a therapeutic way regardless, is through journaling and praying and, and just inviting the divine and your higher self in to bring 
out what needs to come out and to see it and to face it. Um, but this is something that I know that a loving and qualified healer, guide, therapist, coach can really support you with. So it's really helpful to have someone to support you in that process, my love. So once you become aware of what needs to, what came through, you know, what were your wounds around sexuality that you need to heal. Now you're aware, right? Now you've acknowledged them. So the next thing we want to do is invite our inner Kuan Yin into our journey. And Kuan Yin is the goddess of unconditional love and compassion and mercy. And mostly compassion and mercy. And one of her origin stories is that she too was raped by monks in a monastery when her father had forbidden her to leave the premises of her home. When her father found out about this, it is said that he had the entire monastery burnt with Kuan Yin still in the temple. And then the story goes that when she passed on, uh, she held forgiveness and she just forgave everybody, including her father. And yet, even in that state, she refused to go on the other side in heaven and uh, committed to staying on our side until she helps every soul become enlightened. And so Kuan Yin is the goddess who receives all tears. That's one of her other names and attributes is that she receives all of our tears. And so her gift to us and how I help my clients in this process is to help you grieve. Grieve your wounds. Grieve the betrayals. You know, at one point my mom had said to me that, what was it about you that all the men came after you because your sister, you know, no one else ever complained about this. So why was it, you know, that they all came after you, in essence, blaming me when I was, you know, the age of seven to 11 for the sexual abuse that I experienced instead of acknowledging that she failed to protect me as my parent because this all happened in the home. And grieving that was very necessary. That's why I got a second bout of depression in my mid-20s because while the psychotherapy was very helpful, I hadn't gone through spiritual healing. And we really need to do spiritual healing around our sexuality because, like I said, they're inseparable. And Kuan Yin is that aspect of ourselves that represents the unconditional love and compassion she holds a space for us. She is infinite grace and forgiveness and mercy. So it's very essential for us to give ourselves that space and to hold ourselves so tenderly as we grieve our sexual wounds and betrayals and everything that's happened to us. This is why I feel so, so honored to be able to hold the space for my beloved clients because that's really all I can do. I, I, I say I'm a, you know, a spiritual or sacred feminine healer, but I'm not a healer. I hold the space, provide the tools, and it's the, it's the divine that does the healing and it's your openness and receptivity uh, that invites in the miracles, right? So Kuan Yin is the second part of our journey where we invite this, the healing of our sexuality by grieving our wounds once we've acknowledged them through Persephone. The next goddess that we work with is the beautiful Egyptian queen, mother, lover, magician, healer, Isis. Isis is so wonderful. She's a healer. Even if you see um, in this card, it says Egyptian goddess of love and beauty. She's the divine healer and she's the mother and she's the lover. And, you know, she had to resurrect her uh, husband Osiris from death only in enough time to make love and conceive their son Horus until Osiris was killed again. And, um, she just helps us women heal. And I hope you're also noticing the theme here that Persephone was abducted and raped, Kuan Yin was raped, was, uh, Isis lost her husband and uh, twice, basically. And so the goddesses have gone through a lot of trauma as well, right? And so I really appreciate that. That's why I love this goddess work is because it reminds us that the goddesses too are women and they know what it's like to, to be in pain and then to heal and transcend no matter what we experience. So with Isis, what we do is we want to do some sacral chakra healing and in fact, intensive sacral chakra healing because the sacral chakra is our sexual energy center. It's our womb, it's our sexual organs for men and women both. And 
all of our experiences, especially traumas and wounds around sexuality, even our messages around sexuality and sin and shame and, and all of that guilt, they get lodged in our sacral chakra. So it's really essential to get some sacral chakra healing, whether you want to work with a healer. But Isis just really helps us to remind us that we want to heal our sacral chakras because once we heal them, that's where our sexual power is, right? Our uh, when it's healthy, it's it. We feel vibrant. We feel sensual. We feel sexual. We feel beautiful. We feel filled with vitality. It helps clear up blocks around fertility and creativity and even money and abundance and flow because it's all about that beautiful, luscious flow of pleasure and bliss and blessings. So we. This is where we're reintegrating, and we are healing from our wounds. We're healing our sexuality. We are uh, just, you know, reprogramming mentally, physically, emotionally, and energetically. So I really invite you when you get to this place in your healing journey to do get some sacral chakra healing specifically, my love. And then the next goddess on our path is the awesome, badass Lilith. So Lilith was Adam's first wife, and she refused to be subordinate to him. Uh, One story is that she refused to, you know, have sex in missionary position because it meant that she was subordinate to Adam. And so she's kicked out of heaven, and she's like, that's fine with me. And she becomes this free sexual woman where she enjoys a very free sexual life. But unfortunately, um, you know, she was demonized in, in the religion. So... She was not a demon. She's actually a free and independent badass goddess who owns her power and owns her sexuality and is very independent. So Lilith helps you to take back your power, your sexual power, and also your power to honor your sexuality, your independence, and knowing that you can do with your sexuality what you want. No one can tell you what to do with it except you. Not your religion, not your government, not your parents, not your partner, not your friends. Nobody but you. You are the authority in your life. And when you get to this place, what happens is you feel so empowered because you've healed already. You've done all the inner work to get to this place that you trust yourself and you honor yourself and you will only share yourself with someone who honors you, right? So this is about taking back your power and becoming a badass goddess uh, that you are and really standing in your power and refusing to let anyone or anything make you feel that you're not worthy or capable of owning your power, especially your sexual power. So I love this part because this is where I really see my clients rise up and become these awesome, confident, badass goddesses. The next goddess on our path, of course, we can't talk about sexuality without talking about Aphrodite, or in Roman, she's Venus. So Aphrodite, once we take back our power, which is really necessary, then we want to soften it and become receptive and really enjoy sexuality and sensuality. I have a video on uh, embracing Aphrodite or awakening Aphrodite, embracing your sensuality as well as your body image. So there's two different videos. So please make sure you subscribe to my channel and check out those videos and also that you continue to get, you know, all these kinds of videos for you. But Aphrodite will help you to just have fun with your sexuality, right? And to play with it. So long before I ever held hands with a boy, I was buying myself lingerie and learning about the Kama Sutra and Tantra and just really enjoying sexuality as much as I could learn from it, even though I hadn't yet experienced anything. And this was my way of just, again, after I took back my power of saying, I, this is beautiful and sacred and wonderful and exciting. So this is embracing sexuality and it's really wonderful to learn about sacred sexuality about the kama sutra tantric practices and get very sensual to wear beautiful underwear or even lingerie you know underneath your work clothes and just get very goddessy and get very receptive and awaken your inner aphrodite because aphrodite will help you to attract amazing partners uh, this is also about, you know, after you've gone through this journey, you're really coming to a place of self-love, self-worth, self-respect, self-value, and self-empowerment. So you're going to attract conscious, high vibe, awesome partners into your life, right? And if love or partnership is something you're looking for, it's really beautiful to get this healing done. So you're very receptive to only people that are vibrating at your level of integrity and truth and empowerment. So Aphrodite will help you to just 
enjoy being beautiful and luscious and sensual and sexual and draw to you potential partners if that's what you're looking for, but most of all help you to enjoy and embrace and celebrate your sensuality and your sexuality. And at last, we have another Greek goddess, Hera. So Hera is awesome because she is um, she loves sexuality. She was known to borrow Aphrodite's golden girdle, which, you know, just made her very sexual and irresistible to Zeus. Um, and Hera is also a queen, and she's a wife of Zeus who cheated on her a lot. And Hera had a lot of difficulty, of course, with this, and she really understands when we go through those wounds of betrayal or, you know, partners who have affairs. Not that, she, you know, we're condoning staying with that, but she helps you to take back your power and to be in your power and to enjoy yourself fully with sexuality being a very healthy part of your life. Um, so she's there to help you, to remind you that you have the right to be the full woman that you're meant to be. So Hera leaves Zeus at one point and she returns to her homeland where she just finds herself again and she centers into herself because she lost herself in that tumultuous marriage and all that drama. And then Zeus comes and shapeshifts and tries to trick her and she sees right through his trickery but at this point she's in her own power and she's centered and from an empowered place she chooses to go back with him completely up to every woman what she wants to do. I mean, we just have our a beautiful, badass Beyonce with her lemonade came out recently. And, you know, her story is one of grieving, being wrathful, but then taking back her power and being a queen, being queen bee, as only she can be. And, uh, but, you know, it's a story of her choice to forgive and heal herself, her marriage, move forward. So every woman has this choice. It's completely up to you and all choices are honored as long as it's, you being true to you, right? So Hera is the goddess that we meet at the end of our journey in healing your sexuality because she helps us to integrate it with every part of our life. She helps you to become a queen. So sexuality, like I said, is also the energy of creativity. It's about what you want to create and birth in the world, your businesses or your ideas, your hobbies, your creations, your passions, having the marriage, having your queendom, and having, you know, children if that's what you want, having your, you know, fellow sister goddesses in your, in Olympus as she did. So hanging out with your awesome females that empower you and having it all because you're meant to have it all and you can have it all. And I really hope that, you know, if you embark on this journey that you at the end of it become the beautiful Hera and the flourishing goddess that you truly are meant to be. That's why my practice is called Flourishing Goddess. So I really hope this has empowered you, my love. And that you know that if I'm sitting here, you know, in this place from having the childhood that I had and having the traumatic experience that I had and then also having the divine support that it's completely and absolutely possible for anyone and you. And I really just pray that my journey and sharing it has been, um, you know, it's for you. Uh, I, I heard, I think it was Lisa Nichols that said, once you go through your story, it's no longer for you. It's for others who may benefit from it. So I only share this in hopes that it may help you know that no matter what you have gone through, the divine is always there to support you. And you have the capacity, the inner strength, the wisdom, and the guidance, and the infinite divine support to heal anything at all. And as far as your sexuality is concerned, I really pray that you open to healing it and embracing it, no matter what sex you are, no matter what your sexual orientation is, no matter what your sexual past has been, you deserve to have a vibrant and enjoyable and sacred sexual life now and for the rest of your life. So I pray that this has served you and I would love for you to, you know, just join me and get more support from me. So visit me on my site, flourishinggoddess.com, where right away when you sign up, you'll get a um, beautiful guided meditation with the goddesses. And if you want to work with me, the way that you can work with me is book a one hour coaching session first. And from there, we'll discuss a customized plan just for you and just talk about how we can work together. But most of all, I just hope that this has really supported you. And please subscribe to YouTube. Let me know in the comments how this has served you. And join me on Facebook and Instagram. All that's on my website. I would so love to connect with you and share more and more with you. So thank you so much for joining me, beloved. I'm sending you all my love. Namaste.